Hi, good evening. Welcome to the Expire Show brought to you by Science Center Singapore, Singapore Institute of Technology, and Neo Aeronautics. So, in the September series, we're going to feature five guest speakers in different areas of technologies from sound, from meat, artificial meat, and even to medical devices. And hope that you'll join me at Thursday, 8 p.m. for our show. Tonight, we're going to feature some of our founded by uh, Dr. Alcoy Yonki, okay? And therefore, we're going to talk to him and understand uh, what is his motivation, uh, how this translates his technology for difficult problems of the market or our customers, and what is his journey of innovation, turning his technology into a product, and finally, the entrepreneurship part of it. How to form a company and how do you build a team? How do you do your marketing? How do you raise funding for startups? So join me this way. Okay. Hello. Hi. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we all both from the so <laughs> okay. We just call ourselves by uh, our names, right? Sure. We'll do. So uh, thanks for coming and. Uh, for the audience, what they would like to understand what you do first, and maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Yao Bi. Um, so I'm the CEO of and the founder of um, Sound Eye. So what Sound Eye is focusing on is to use sound tech, sound recognition technology to see the world. So far, um, what we have been doing using the sound recognition technology is for to help um, elderly people. Um, in the elder care, we have used the sound recognition to, you know, for surveillance. Um, we also use it for almost as well. If you have any problem, you have slides, right? You can go to some of the slides. Sure. Okay. Is there anything to you? So yeah, I mean, um, um, I was working in this store uh, that was back in 2013, 2013. Uh, I was working on a pet robot that uses uh, sound recognition technology as well. So if you feed pet squeeze people the robot, uh, they are embedded microphones inside the soft fur. We are able, able to find out how, how you touch the robot. So the first idea that we are thinking of uh, is that we can use this robot to help the physical uh, for the to help the therapist. Instead of putting eye contact, how the elderly look uh, behave, or we can use pet robot. So one therapist, we deploy an army of robots, it can then, you know, um, monitor the condition of the elderly who has a dementia. So uh, along with this experiment that I've been doing with the pet robot, an elderly told me that she had a fall in the washroom, she was sleeping in the elderly. Uh, then she had, you know, she was screaming for help. She, she, you know, she tried to, you know, get help for three days. And do you know how we, you know, she survived in that three days? No. Inside the toilet. There's no food. Oh. Yeah. So she was stranded there for three days until the relative came and saved her. So to survive, she drink water from the toilet. So that's, that's a very interesting observation. Right? Firstly, you have a piece of technology and you are trying to 
define a usage for your technology like that of us. So we, this is what we call technology push, right? In a way, yes. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm thinking of some of the sometimes you find this odd coincidences. Yes, yes. yes. Hey, probably instead of using tech, you know, some regulation for the tech robot, hey, get other usage. Correct. Yeah. So so the interesting thing that we study in school, uh, mm-hmm. right, is professor will teach, uh, So we use design thinking, right? Sure. So so one of the things about design thinking is that we always create a persona. A person who um, represents a problem, right? Sure. And, and of course, if the person is real with that, because then you can really feel it and mm. then you observe what happened, you, 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 you call empathy process. Mm. Right? Mm. So you empathize or you become commercial. And in, this, in your case, it's really you can empathize, right? Because you have this. Can you repeat the story again? Um, the elderly. The elderly lady, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Who uh, you know, fall down, you know, stranded for three days. Uh, scream for help and the woman comes and rescues her since she's, she's, she's leaving the world. Yeah, so she's leaving alone. So stranded in the water room. Stranded in the water room? Yes. So how do you eat? Drink water from the toilet bowl. Oh my. Drink water to survive, right? And there's only one source of water. Exactly. And yeah. discover three, three days later. Yeah, exactly. And that, 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 that you can understand these big problems that exactly. you can yeah. solve, right? Okay. Then yeah, so um, after that, um, I was, I, you know, I was telling my reporting officer, you know, hey, probably you can use some recognition to detect the screen for help. Um, for example, ah, that's just this kind of screen, you don't have to wear anything. It's not intruding your privacy. Mm. It's not a problem for you. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so this is a very uh, quick example of how the technology works. So just now, um, the next sound that you're going to hear is explosion, as you can see. Explosion there. Okay. Um, the next one will be screaming. There you go. A lady screaming. Then um, you know another lady screaming as well. Okay. And then the last um, you know is a very short scream as well. So um, regardless of whether it's a short scream, long scream, gunshot explosion, talking sound, these are the potential sounds that we are able to recognize using our recognition. So in, in, in that sense, uh, when, when, so your idea is this, right? When, when uh, people want to do surveillance, they normally use vision, yes. like eye, right? Yeah. So you see, but of course privacy issue, huh? mm. you want to see people bathing or whatever. But, but people in a, in a, in a, in a typical bathing, but they, they fell, uh, they make some noise, some sound. Yeah, so uh, in a, if you use sound, just ah, just scream. So we just whether that you're a Japanese, Singaporean or Indian, it doesn't matter to us because it's just a screen from a person. So the guy is the same. In fact, we use the same recognition technology, sound recognition technology for surveillance, mm. impact, gunshot, explosion. Mm. Because explosion in Bangkok and explosion in Singapore is the same. It is the same. We are able to recognize that. So when we hear all this abnormal sound, or we call it the target sound, uh, we will bring it alert to the caregivers or the screen. Uh, then uh, you know either they go and verify uh, what's happening there, uh, use voice, because my guys also have a voice in the call, so you can talk to the person at that location as well. Okay. Yeah. So, so is that the reason why it's your, the, the company name comes? Sound, sound of eye, right? so Sound to replace the eye or what? So we're using sound as a, you know, a metaphor for eye. Okay. So to see the world using sound in a way. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, okay. So, Karen? Yeah, so, uh, so far, I guess, uh, the past few years, uh, we have been deploying to a number of uh, customers. Mm. In fact, um, we are not selling to consumer at this stage. We are dealing with our organizations, companies, mm. uh, B2B, business to business. Okay. So, it um, includes um, healthy nursing home. Um, we have deployed to orphanage, home for the destitute, home for the mental impairment. All these uh, places that require certain kind of monitoring. We also deployed to Changi Airport for security, so for security purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, a shopping mall in Bangkok, a condominium in Bangkok as well. Let's, let's talk about the technology first, right? Sure. So, you, you show the different screens and all things. Mm-hmm. So, so the, the, the technology is you can detect very, because the ambience noise are uh, there's quite a lot of ambience, mm-hmm. that's right? And you are detecting a very, maybe one kind of occurrence in the noise. How does your technology actually uh, decipher that? Um, in fact, we use um, various uh, features uh, that you can uh, observe in the spectrogram. So, um, the spectrogram, 
this sounds like me. Uh -huh. So we keep teaching the you know our um, rec, um our classifier uh, by combining a lot of things uh, to, to say that hey this is swimming, this is swimming, this is natural, this is natural. Mm -hmm. So uh, more or less uh, you know um, once we train enough data, uh, we're able to somehow um, you know make the system understand that hey this sound is what this that sound is what. So um, at this stage we have few thousand of uh, few thousand hours of sound. Really. So uh, by having all these data is very important, especially for AI yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. Um, and every day our sound library keep increasing. Because the more the more devices you need for an object, right. um, the more data you also get as well. So you have a sound database? Yes. So any any drop you just compare against the sound database? Um yes, yeah, same way, yeah. And then you say this is roughly around UL yeah. now, right? Yeah. Okay. So just just I just trying to understand. Sure. Um, because we study mathematics, right? We try to see, frankly, uh, mm -hmm. what mathematical theory is being used Neural network. I mean, uh, most of the AI is using neural networks. Neural network, right? I never use any quantum transform, right? For some analysis. Um, we do. Yes, you do, do, right? Okay, 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 all right. We study quantum transform, right? Or <laughs> series, all right? But okay, we're not going to talk about mathematical things, but I think it's important that we go to technology, sure. right? The science, uh, the engineering, and the mathematics are actually quite fundamental for us to come out of all these solutions. Mm -hmm. No, explain, uh, maybe, uh, what's the difference between an installation between uh, uh, Opus Home mm -hmm. and uh, orphanage or childcare center? Oh, um, the way how they scream or, you know, cry for help is totally different. Mm -hmm. okay. The pitch, the duration, the, 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 the intensity as well. So um, over the past few years, uh, we've been collecting all these different cohort at different age group as well. Um, so more or less, uh, we're able to you know get more than ninety percent accuracy. Mm -hmm. We were very sing low single digit was lung rate. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, you know, we started with elder care, but yeah. suddenly in you know, um, there is a partner that asked me, hey, can I detect gunshot explosion for surveillance purposes? I said yes. Uh, so we deploy to you know airport, shopping malls, etc. etc. Then someone asked me, hey, can you detect um, use this the same technology to detect uh, for children who cry for help? Yeah, we say, yeah, it is possible for us. So uh, I'm pretty really blessed that um, we set up the elder care, but somehow somehow it is now inside a very large you know, kind of domain that can be used to detect any type of uh, potential emergency that we can use detect using sound in the way. Okay, that's interesting. So so it, is, it seems that uh, your, your, your technology is generic, right? Every day we find new use of it. For example, when the hospital asked me to detect the beeping sound of a IV pump machine. Because um, if an IV pump machine has an error, it will beep, 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 right. it will produce this uh, beeping sound. Mm. So uh, what we did is uh, we, do, uh, you know, we go there, hospital, collect the data, um, the, the beeping sound of the machine. Uh, and then we demonstrate to the hospital that hey, it is possible for us to detect a uh, low alert beeping sound and a high alert beeping sound in a way mm, mm, mm. using the same technology. As mm. you can see, the sound recognition was meant for elder care. Correct. Then we use it for gunshot explosion surveillance. Then we use it for orphanage, home for the destitute. Then suddenly we use it for the machine as well. So I would say that um, more or less every day uh, I meet new people. Uh, they come up with uh, you know new ideas or you know for us. Can you detect that? Can you detect this? Even being the earth will produce sound. Mm. So the types of sound that we able to hear from the digging excavator, whether it's hard soil or, or uh, soft soil, it is possible that we can detect that as well. So you touch on something very interesting, right? Because a lot of times when we are looking at opportunity, yeah, okay. saying that okay, I have a piece of technology I'm doing for old folks home surveillance, right? Sure. Whether they fell down or not, then I sort of, uh, when people look at it, say, oh, I have another environment or situation, right? So you sort of expand, right? Mm. So if you just sit down and sure. record and analyze your sound technology, can you imagine there are so many applications? Not really, but to be honest, I mean, around us, mm. there are sound everywhere. Yeah. It is, we're, we're, we're somehow surrounded by all this sound. That uh, I think more or less, I mean, a lot of companies do vision optics. By all means, I think the technology works amazingly well. Mm. Uh, but there are some places that we cannot put camera for any reason. Mm. Uh, that's where you know sound. We can exploit the use of our sound, sound in a way. Mm. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, I would say you know most people. I will tell most of the people that wherever camera can be, can be deployed, sound can be deployed as well. Mm, but okay. but it, where camera cannot be deployed, sound can still be deployed. <laughs> So you're telling me your market is bigger than the camera? Uh, I think right at this stage, uh, as I mentioned, you know, 10 cameras looking at one person, the camera, you know, camera has a ah, okay. larger market at this stage. Yeah. Can you tell us about the market? Do you have a slide the market? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think it's the last slide there. Okay, maybe you can go and yeah, so, just carry on. Yeah. yeah so this is a demo of, um, you know, we have uh, eight microphones. When I scream, the camera will look left and right. So we combine the sound localization to detect where the sound is coming from and the sound recognition to detect the target sound. Oh, so, so it's not just it occur, but where it occur? Um, the direction where the, the direction sound, where it occur. Exactly. Okay. So um, this is meant for surveillance. We deployed to airport, shopping mall. Um, this will also assist the security guard. Uh, when they receive the alert, they don't have to manually control the you know camera mm -hmm. and tilt. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the our, our system is able to control that automatically. Okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah, this is a demo that we have. All right. Okay. Yeah, so um, beyond the, you know, for elder care, you know, uh, there's a lot of potential market. Um, in fact, uh, the revenue that we generated, um, thanks to our partners and customers, I think uh, it showed that uh, the sound recognition technology does work and uh, people is buying it. Mm. So, um, you know, at this stage, um, we are having an issue of um, how fast we can deploy to our customer. Mm. Right now, um, some of our customers, we have to tell them, sorry, we're busy. Once we finish this building, we will come to your building. Mm. So um, in a way, um, what we're trying to do at this stage is expanding the business uh, by creating a smaller device and the software that allows our partner. Uh, it can be any system integrators out there which they have their own customer. Uh, we can partner with them. Um, they will configure the device themselves and then they will deploy the sensor de themselves as well. So this is uh, one of the devices that we have yeah. that we upgraded. Um, our current system is about 20 by 20 centimeter. Okay, it's pretty big. It can detect motion, it can detect um, sound yeah. in a way. Yeah. So what we did is um, because uh, we do see the opportunity here, instead of 20 by 20, we have shrunk to only 10 centimeter diameter, okay. which is yeah. uh, nearly a quarter size of the original that we have. Yeah. And this sensor also have uh, other environment sensors like temperature, humidity, light, smoke sensors okay. uh, that we can you know, use it to de detect the surroundings, uh, you know, what's happening there. So mm -hmm. you can scream, we detect, you don't move, we also detect. Um, yeah, I mean, if there's any, we detect smoke, we also detect that as well. Okay. Right, yeah, okay. It can be kind of smart home. Um, yeah, but um, I guess uh, at this stage, uh, because our team is still small, uh, handling every customer's uh, consumer will be a bit heavy for us. Okay. So uh, we do intend to work with partners uh, that has an IoT market for consumers. Uh, I mean, who knows? we can collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, uh, the device can be deployed on the ceiling or the wall or the table. It doesn't matter to us because sound is 360 degrees. It's not directional. Mm. Unlike camera, you have to point the camera to a certain angle to look at, you know, where you want to see. But sound is omnidirectional. There's no blind spot. So uh, in other words, if you, if you fall under, behind the table, right. under the table, mm. camera can't see. Mm. Oh, yeah. But when you scream, Sound can, we can still hear the sound. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean a possible use case for a monitoring elderly who's living alone, for example, we can detect them screaming for help. Uh, we can detect whether they wake up in the morning, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Do they move inside the house? If no motion, we'll trigger the alert. Okay. Voice and calm. If anything happens, you want the caregiver want to talk to the person at home. Voice in the calm. Two-way voice and calm. Um, this is we have this feature because whenever people fall down. Yeah. People will, you know, they press the panic button. Yeah, ask for help. You know, caregivers will call them, hey, are you okay? But the phone is always on the table, they are on the floor. Yeah, yeah. How do they pick up the phone? Right. So that's why we come up with the, the voice and comp feature to allow caregivers to easily talk to the person at home without the need of phone or without any, you know, any devices. Okay. So yeah, mobile app to verify, detect long no motion during the daytime, uh, trigger alert uh, when we detect um, abnormal temperature or even uh, we detect the smoke. Uh. Yeah. So more or less, um, uh, try the, the same solution here can be used for research lab, can be used for um, warehouse, mm. for workspace safety. It can be used for in the library. It can be used in the train station. So we're trying to develop a universal, uh, we're, we're adopting this universal design kind of a strategy here. 
instead of just designed for one particular user, mm -hmm. can I make it universal enough mm -hmm. that I can deploy to other domains or other people or not? So uh, because um, we're spending a lot of um, time, effort, money to develop a, a solution, yeah. why do we want to stick in one Agreed. domain only? Yeah. So, so I, I, got one very, I think it's a very tough question, right? Because uh, from what I see, the application is in an enclosed environment. Sure. How about in an open environment? Is your technology good enough for that? Um, I think at this stage, uh, you know, we tried 10 meters yes. of uh, people screaming for help, yeah. gunshot sound uh, in the Changi Airport. Okay. So that one still works. I but see. beyond that, uh, we haven't tried yet. But mm -hmm. I guess, um, you know, if we're talking about 20 meters, it really depends on a single to noise ratio. Yeah. So um, we need uh, a certain single to noise ratio in order to give us a better speak, better microphone so that can pick up. Um, better microphone, yes. Uh, but I guess um, it also depends on the the target sound. Uh. It's, if it's, let's say if I put my microphone here, uh. I scream. Ah, uh, sorry, it's too soft already. Okay. But if I put it far a bit, but I really scream. Ah, very loud. So it's not about the distance. It's about the single to noise ratio. Okay. Whether the background noise and the target noise, what's the difference? Yeah, the target sound has to be more than the background noise. Ah. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, so another product that we had is, um, is using, by combining our sound recognition technology, detect abnormal sound with a LiDAR sensor, a laser sensor that is normally used for the autonomous vehicle. Yeah, for automatic for my drone. Uh, from, <laughs> yeah, drones, uh, yeah, the for autonomous vehicles. Detection, yes. Yeah. Um, so what we are trying to do here is um, a lot of customers ask me, hey, you have, you're able to detect at normal motion and almost sound like screaming for help, gunshot, all those things. Can you also detect a person laying on the floor? Mm. So we're thinking of um, using cameras, but camera again, you know, uh, defy the design principle of sound eye, intrudes privacy. So okay. that's a no go. Right, right. Um, thermal cameras. In fact, thermal cameras, we search high and low for thermal cameras. Somehow we find a lot, a lot of all these cameras does have a camera, oh. <laughs> but it's using different filters or you know, uh, yeah. to just detect the thermal, the thermal wave of a human being or the sur surroundings. Yeah, okay, okay. So, so this is a filter lens. And um, we also think that, hey, thermal washroom, take a hot shower, it will confuse the system as well. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah so um, because um, who knows, probably we're going to you know, market this to Japan. Japan yeah. likes what? hot bath, right? right yeah. So thermal sensors will not work, at, thermal cameras will not work as well. Mm. So I think the only solutions that we see the potential with a high resolution is uh, LiDAR in a way. Mm. So um, yeah, I have a video. Um, so you, using this, you scream with this head, you fall down with it, because there is a potential you fall down, you cannot, you unconscious, you cannot scream. Yeah. So right now with this, you fall down with scream, um, you fall down with detect, you scream, you also detect. Mm, because okay. uh, most of the fall detection system is, it only recognize fall. And if I'm not falling, how do I call for help? Mm. Do I intentionally fall down? No, I don't think so, right? I see. So um, if you are able to scream for help, by all means, scream for help. If you fall down, yes, my sensor can detect that as well. Yeah, so it will, you know, um, um, fill all the gaps for all these, um, you know, different accidents or emergency cases. Okay. So yeah, a quick demo. Uh, as you can see here, it's not intruding anyone's privacy. So LiDAR is blasting a lot of lights as a certain frequency wave. Mm. Then the light will be bounced back. There's a receiver to receive all these lights. So that's why you see all these tiny dots. So if a person falls down, you will see the red border. If it stands back, green border. Okay, I see. All yeah. right. So yeah. the, the, the way how you fall, it doesn't, um, it's, it's in a way, um, how fast you fall, whether it's a, fall, a fast fall or a slow fall, it does not matter to us. Oh, you just want to lie down. <laughs> um, in a way, we look at the pose okay, of the body, yeah. human body yeah. before and after the fall. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, as you can see here, yeah, it's very um, straightforward. Um, RGB cameras has a lot of features. Mm. They have colors, they have, um, you know, a high resolution for LiDAR. We only have very limited, you know, uh, features that we can use. But um, mm. yeah, I mean, we managed to, you know, do this. So um, yeah, we're going to deploy in uh, to to few of our customers in the next few months. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you compare our solution and the existing panic button, existing panic button when you press, you have to call. If the person didn't pick up the phone call, they you have to go all the way there to mm -hmm. check. For us, if you scream, I will send you the auto clip to your mobile phone. 
You can play back that short audio clip, which is about two, two seconds long. Hear whether it's uh, someone screaming or is it something else. You can verify within a few seconds. If you fall down, I'll send you a two to three seconds video clip that you saw just now, before and after the fall. Mm. So uh, again, it's only a few seconds effort. So you compare to, you know, you have to call them, using a penny button, you have to call them and walk all the way there to check. I mean, my time of, um, you know, receiving the alert and verifying the alert is very fast. Yeah, because um, if really accident happens, time is of essence. We need to handle the emergency cases fast and easy. Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, just now you asked me about the market. Yes. Um, yeah, elder care, 700 over billion dollars. I never expect it to be so big. Um, surveillance, as I may, in fact, surveillance is not that much. Uh, it's mm. 45 billion. Yeah. Um, so workspace safety, I also checked, um, it's about 19, 19, 19 billion. So uh, there are other potentials that I mentioned about, like digging the earth, the soil, uh, for health hospital, um, you know, detecting machine sound. Um, there's a, there are a lot of uh, potential use cases for sound recognition. So uh, for sound eye, sometimes we also try to be selective, uh, which um, is in line with our vision and what we can achieve as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that will bring value to our partner or customer and back to ourselves as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we more or less have uh, talked about the innovation part, the technology, and then the innovation sure. part of it, and the application. Now, let's focus a little bit about the, uh, the entrepreneurship part of it, right? Okay. So, so, uh, so you are a researcher in ASTAR, right? Yeah. So that's a cushy job, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe so, but uh, uh, so why, why the urge? to set up your own company? Uh, uh, hmm. I, I think different people have different tastes of excitement. Yeah. In fact, before you know, I was doing Sound Eye, yeah. I owned a North Indian restaurant as well. I see, I see. I know how to use tandoori and make nuns. Okay, so you can be a <laughs> chef. <laughs> um, I work from washroom to the wait, wait, um, waitering to mm. the, the kitchen to the cash counter. I nearly do everything. So yeah, I, guess, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I just want to learn all these different stuff. I think business is one exciting thing to learn. Yeah. Um, I think coming back to Sound is because I guess um, I want to make sure that my invention does save people. Mm. How many chances do you have to save people? Correct. I mean, uh, probably, yeah, I mean, one in a million that on the street you save someone. Uh, but I guess, um, you know, if um, somehow my technology is able to save someone and bring better uh, quality of life to someone, why not? Yeah. I mean, uh, so I think it's the life passion, right? That, it is. That actually, uh, maybe because you have seen that w it happens to, to uh, the, the real, real, real uh, happenings yeah. that, that it happens to people and, and you can use your, 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 your skills or your technology to solve the problem and you see that, that is good, right? Anyway, the market is big so and there are a lot of applications. Now, but but uh, becoming an entrepreneur is not as simple as just getting a job, right? Getting a job is past the interview. When an entrepreneur make a decision, they pass the interview. After that, it's like, okay, where's the money, right? <laughs> you need uh, not that not. Uh, we always say that uh, um, you don't go into entrepreneurship because of the money. You go in because you want to solve a problem. When you solve the problems, then you create value for people, and then the money will come, right? So exactly. the first thing is to solve the problem. First, exactly. Right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So but you need money to start, right? So how how in the earlier days, how do you? Um, I think, you know, I, I met Prof Neil, um, you know, back in NUS. Yeah. Uh, I guess um, I won a competition, you know, I managed okay. to get some uh, fundings from there as well. Um, but uh, it's not enough to, you know, sustain as sure. well um, when you start the company. So I guess, um, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I have to invest my own money mm. um, until the stage that um, somehow I also need to do adjunct, become an adjunct lecturer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I nearly went to flip burgers in McDonald's, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but that was the earlier days of Singapore entrepreneurial scene. Exactly. Now there are a lot more grants, a lot more investors yeah, yeah. around. So I was teaching um, in Republic Poly, um, C++. I was teaching in uh, Singapore Poly, mm. um, JavaScript. Mm. I, was teach, I was teaching in SUSS mm. uh, on uh, Geontology as well. Uh, okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, any money that I make, yes, I have put aside for my family, you know, uh, the rest I'll just come into my yes, company. Okay, yeah. So I, I guess um, if you are become, if you're trying to become an entrepreneur by just having the thought of uh, making money, yes, there's no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. But uh, to my op in, in my own perspective is 
if you just think of money only, mm. you you give up very uh, very soon, very easily as well. Why? Because if you're not if your business is not making money, you feel very depressed. Hey, why am I doing this? Okay, mm. I can go and find a giant job yeah, that yeah. has earn more money. Yeah. Your passion is not there. Yeah. If your passion is there to save lives, to look after the elderly, um, yes, okay. I'll work double hard. I'll go work at junk, you know, I'll part time. I'll pump in more, you know, money to, you know, bring the business uh, until, you know, we see the end of the end of the tunnel, see, see, see some light as well. Mm. I, I guess, um, yeah, I mean, that's a big difference of uh, whether you work for the passion or for the money. Yes, I think you need both, but first of all, I think you need to put passion first. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If you don't have a drive to find money, also cannot. Yeah, because <laughs> because the, the, the process is always this, right? You, you, you start off, you, you go into, especially in technology, right? We need to do R&D work and test and pilot. And then, of course, the cash will come. And especially down. sound recognition is very new technology. For you, yes. Convincing people to use yeah. huh, sound yeah. to detect this. Yeah. Now, even, yeah. and it's unheard before. Yeah. So I spent a, quite a number of, uh, a few years to convince people that this works. Well, but nowadays we are we are we are more palatable to uh, supporting tech fund, right? There's uh, tech technology and there are a lot of tech funds around. Okay, so but important thing is that, that because uh, whether you are in uh, uh, now or in the past, the, 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 you will start seeing that when doing R and D, the, the 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 cash will goes down, and then and then you need to have the passion to believe, and then it comes up again, right? When you start selling, so that's that's an important part, right? Rather than just you know, I buy, I sell, I, I buy gadgets or trading. Buy gadgets, sell gadgets. I can make money on the spot. Uh, right? That sounds that's like trading. <laughs> <laughs> that's trading. Yeah, that's yeah. that's very very different. Okay, so uh, we spent about half an hour chatting on the business. I think we can go to the audience for some questions. So, uh, where do you see some I ten years from now? Okay, uh, uh, good question here. Singapore, we uh, the re most recent research shows that. Uh, the, to become a unicorn, which is a billion dollar company, is about, s about seven years. <laughs> so, ten years. <laughs> um, I guess, um, you know, whatever I'm doing at this stage, um, you know, the existing product I'm selling, the new product I'm developing as well. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it's all indoor. So, I guess, um, you know, um, I'll say that, um, you know, Sunway, more or less, um, we try to keep, you know, we, we keep innovating because um, the market, or the competitors is catching up. We continue to, you know, develop all this new technology. So within ten years, I would say that um, my technology will be, you know, here and there, mm. embedded without you knowing. Mm. Uh, it's like you know, you're using a mobile phone or you know something that is so uh, common that you really must use it in a way. So I guess um, you know, uh, my other f next plan, who knows? Probably um, I'm doing all the indoors. Probably I'm doing sensor that I can track you out, out when you're outdoor as well. Mm -hmm. Wherever, who knows? Shoe, I can put some sensors. You know, I, um, I'm using LiDAR. I'm not using sound recognition only. Okay. I'm exploring other technologies as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you fall down, you know, probably in your heel, I can put sensors. Um, I can detect when you're moving inside the construction site. When you fall down, I also know. When you scream for help, I also know as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So yeah, I mean, um, um, pet robot, who knows? I can make the pet robot again. Yeah. I, I stopped the pet robot project because of focusing on the sound eye. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But, but I, I, I can see that because now you have a lot, quite a bit of installation, reference sites, right? Sure. And, and, uh, and uh, the Asia people is still quite a big market, right? Because um, if you look at Japan, mm. okay, and I think you have a Jap Japanese investor, mm. I mean, mainly for the purpose of that. That you know, Japan, you have a lot of Asian people staying at home mm. and, and detection. Isn't that a very good place for you to focus your attention? Um, yes and no. Um, I think more towards the elder care. I think the first question will be, who will be paying for this? Mm. Um, elderly by itself, um, you know, I think um, in our part, you know, the current elderly, they might not have a lot of our savings. Yeah. The upcoming one, like you know, us, or, you know, you first and then me. No. We have more spending power. Who knows? Uh, probably, you know, we can capture that market as well. But again, coming back to that is um, yes, the elder care market is huge. But I think you know, um, I learned from my first few years of uh, experience. Mm. Um, I'm too focused on elder care. I forgot about other domains. Mm. Other domains will also bring you um, reference, word of mouth, back to different domains as well. Um, they will also bring you revenue. You know, to you know, um, 
thrive through the pandemic. Because like for pandemic, COVID-19, um, if, it, if this kind of pandemic is able to destroy one single market mm. and you're solely focusing on that market, only, you're in big trouble. Mm. So for a company, I think the you know, Singapore government also advised us, uh, advised SME as well, to be flexible. If this, com if this business is not going to work for you, are you able to switch to, you know, or pivot to another domain? So doing business is about all flexibility. If you're flexible enough to, you know, handle all the possible, the, the, the issues, the problems, you're, you're, you're going to survive on that. So to me, elder care, yes, there's a lot of competitors as well. But uh, why, you know, why, why just elder care? Why not, anything, you know, other domains as well? Mm -hmm. It's the same technology, it's the same device, you know, um, why not? I just have to work doubly hard. Um, then uh, just to make sure that uh, my company is able to continue grow, um, because um, you know from the from three years ago, um, we have been uh, our revenue has been doubled, mm -hmm. tripled. Okay. Uh, because we don't focus on just elder care. Okay. If we, you know that's that's how you know. But I think I end. think once you have the reference sites done, mm. then the, then is the is the is your your growth strategy, right? Yes. How do you do you do you do it yourself, which is going to be difficult and need a lot more money, or you partner with people and go overseas and either distribution mm. or scale up? Yeah. So um, it, you know, business is coming definitely. Um, to a certain degree, COVID nineteen you know has uh, forced people to not to do face to face engagement. Um, who knows? Probably use technology to replace human doing the patrol mm -hmm. will be a better idea. Okay. You know. Um, so for us, our you know. At this stage, every month, we only can deploy to one building uh, because of our manpower resources, uh, because we only have so much people. Uh, the building is so high, we need to deploy a few hundreds of sensors mm. within a month okay. or two. depends on how, how, much com uh, how complex it is. So more business, if I intend to hire more people, it's a vicious cycle. Mm. I'll keep spending more money to generate more revenue. It's not a good strategy. Mm. So my strategy is um, rather than having this cake uh, I eat the cake alone. I might as well share the cake, yeah. so I have bigger cake as well. Correct. So um, I think earlier I mentioned that um, why do I want to deploy to you know this device myself? I can partner with people, which they also have customers. We share the cake. You know, if you have customer, I will deploy you the technology, the device. Mm. You can configure and then deploy to the customer as well. So you win, customer win, and user win. I win as well. So instead of one month, one building, now I can one month, multiple buildings. Yes. Through partnership. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think um, Singapore is a small market, but definitely there are sizable market here as well. Until uh, someone can't handle anymore. So we're thinking about, you know, we're, we're, we're working towards the partnership. Uh, we're developing our backend system to allow partners to configure the device. So, yeah, I think, um, I think one, one of the ways, of course, like uh, people who design, let's say, old folks home, retirement home is sort of work with the architects build everything into it and mm. then of course it's, uh, then they will do it as a project right and and uh, uh, I think one possible recurring income is that you, you, you have a cloud and then you just just uh, have the management center so it's a recurring income right? mm, mm, mm. okay we, we will go on to another question uh, somebody asked was there a time when you face a challenge that you make you doubt the business will you quit that's the answer <laughs> <laughs> when your bank account drops to you know less than a hundred dollars, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I think definitely this everyone will face this. Yeah. Again, coming back to the idea of um, whether you persist or you know you give up. Yes, I do have a few times of uh, hey probably I will just give up if I don't get this business or deal or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean um, you know thank God you know whatever I said hey if I don't get this I will quit. You know, because um, you know, it's, I can't move any further already. Yeah. But um, every time when I say this, good news pop up. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, um, luck also plays a certain part. Mm -hmm. Persistence plays a certain part. Yeah. Um, your passion also plays a certain part. So a lot of um, things you know is working around this. Mm -hmm. That um, yeah, I mean, yes, I say hey, I want to give up, but suddenly hey, something pops up. Okay, keep let's keep working on it. <laughs> But it's interesting things is that uh, when um, when you are uh, the only founder or the you know or the, you you tend to uh, uh, when you are doubt yourself right. But yeah. if you are a team, then of course you can support each other. So do you believe that 
that uh, when you found a company, mm. you should have a team rather than a single person? Um, when I started Sawai, I was, I'm a one-man show. Yeah, that's right. Um, after you know, three, three years, I managed to find business investors you know, pumping in money already. From one, I managed to go into six. Um, and I'm still looking for people at this stage as well. Mm -hmm. um, so coming back to your question regarding the founder is, I guess there's no right or wrong answer for that. Yeah. Some people can work by itself, by themselves. Some cannot work in pairs or you know more than one. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I think it's not about the co-founder. It's more towards finding a the A team. The it's A team. The okay. A team. Okay. Because if you can get a founder, it doesn't mean that your company is going to grow. At the end of the day, your found, when you have co-founders, you also need a team. Correct. So for me. Um, you know, the story is no one's there to take challenge like me. Some people call me idiot. <laughs> Some people call me, tell me that, hey, why you want to spend your time like this? You go and find a job, you can get better money, you know. Also, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, was thrown to me in a way. So I guess, um, you know, uh, I didn't manage to find a partner because um, no one is crazy as me, I guess. Um, but I was blessed that I can find an A team, a good team that, um, yeah, I mean, off the work, doing the work they're able to you know uh, have a good rapport, rapport um, and uh, yeah they can deliver within the timeline mm. you know they l I think the most important thing is they dare to learn new things they dare, to, they dare to learn right so they, they get out from their own comfort zone yeah I think that is one of the key aspect that I'm looking for employee yeah okay so regardless of whether you're male female you know you're not able to speak conversely properly or whatever yeah. At the end of the day, one important thing is you dare to learn new things because every day, for some while at least, we have new things coming in. Today we use motion sensor, next week we use LiDAR. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, this week we use spectrogram. Who knows? Next week we use cochleargram. Mm, <laughs> Et okay. cetera. I mean there is a lot of things that for us we cannot stay in one place. We have to keep innovate. One is to you know, size the market and also to make us, def um, you know, um, a barrier of entry f uh, for our, you know, competitors. If we stay in one spot, people will catch up. We have to keep a few miles, a uh, few steps ahead in a way. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the team, I'm, is, I'm very blessed with the team. Everyone uh, is able to converse properly to each other. They respect each other. They learn new things. Yeah, so I guess um, coming back to your question about co-founder, um, I never get the chance, <laughs> um, probably, you know, uh, which is good and bad. Uh, the good thing is I have more stocks and I can, you know, find more, a few more rounds of investment to, you know, grow the company even more. Mm, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, good. So maybe, uh, let's see, uh, we have uh, Nicholas, right? So Nicholas has asked a very technical question, right? Sound eye system able to detect seizures or fits? I think Nicholas has a, has a real need here. So he asked a very specific question. Seizures, can, can, can you detect? No. Um, I, I think people is using camera to detect that at this mm -hmm. stage. Um, because seizure or fits, um, they might not have any sound. Uh, people do, do not produce sound. Mm. Uh, and my, as I think as you've seen in the LiDAR sensor, um, the, 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 um, in terms of the, um, the resolution of the LiDAR sensor, it might not be able to capture all these uh, seizure or feeds. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there are companies that are using uh, vision analytics, using a normal camera uh, to detect all this. So, uh, I mean, um, yeah, sound is amazing, can be used here and there, but um, yeah, it's not 100% every, everywhere. So, uh, coming back to the Nicholas, um, you know, question is, um, um, at this stage, I don't think so. But um, yeah, I mean, if they produce sound, we can, you know, collect data and then train the system and then uh, probably we can do something about that. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next question. Same from Nicholas. What is the, what is the most important management lesson you have learned? Management lesson. So. Management lesson. Uh, I think know how to delegate. Ah, okay. I was thinking of finance. But okay. Um, like, finance are also. <laughs> okay, can finance is. Yeah. Um, okay, managing your expense, um, you know, your, your finance when to use the money, you know, when to, you know, save the money. Yes, that requires a certain skill and experience as well. Um, I, I think learn how to delegate 
is one important um, key, key skills that everyone needs to learn. Um, either you do everything yourself or you, you know, ask your team to do it. Okay. Um, part of it is because if you are able to delegate, sometimes you can save money. Mm -hmm. You can save money. Okay. Okay. Um, if you think that, you know, the whole team is unable to do it or is it is going to take a longer time, might as well um, outsource. Right. A few yeah, thousand yeah, dollars yeah. to solve yeah. the problem yeah. once yeah. and for all, yeah. rather than you use your own manpower. So it's a very fine balance. You know how to outsource, how to delegate to your own team, um, which come back to your, you know, how to do manage your finance in a way. Um, yes, um, about 80% of, you know, the things that you see here um, is done in-house. But we also know that, hey, we are not strong in user interface. Outsource it. Outsource a mobile app or, you know, um, let the ex these UI experts to do it. Mm -hmm. They can do faster, they can do better job as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Uh, next question is interesting, right? How, how do you balance between companies' vision, which is oh, your vision, is and investor demands? Okay, so investor <laughs> want returns, and some investor want returns. No, actually, like uh, if you are running a venture capital fund, right? Sure. You have a five-year lifetime fund, right? If, sure. I, if I invest in year one, year five, I want my money back. So, so the, the interest may not be aligned. So how do you manage that? Um, I, I guess um, I'm blessed with an uh, investor uh, that um, give me a lot of control, uh, okay. free freedom in a way. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, every month I have to give report, financial projections, uh, financial reports, um, you know, update about my you know, progress, etc. Et I mm. mean, Japanese, by all means, they are very disciplined, which makes me disciplined as well. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So every month, it, it's all this drill, which I'm happy to do it because every month I'll get to see um, bank account left how, mu how, many, how much money there. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So I guess um, in terms of um, how to manage all this is, I think investors is very straightforward. They just want returns um, and you know, value back to them. Um, it might not be straightforward because um, for me, I'll tell my investor, it's not gonna be quick buck. It's not mm. gonna be quick money here. It's gonna take some time to build the market like what I did a few years ago. Uh, expand to other, mar Japan, uh, con other countries might take more time as well. So I guess um, you know finding a part uh, investor that is able to understand that trust you, give some freedom rather than every month you know order you to do this do that that will hinder the progress of the company as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a marriage because I think everyone say that um, you know when startup look for an investor it's like a marriage, mm -hmm. you know um, even worse than a marriage <laughs> because you know, we're considering amount money you know mm -hmm. a lot of money here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so. Um, these investors that I have, Toro Kanatsu from Japan, they are very kind. They are very supportive. In fact, um, I generated revenue last year. They, s they, they see growth in the company. Mm. They further invest another pot of money as well, okay. which is um, late February in late February 2021. So they, they, they follow up funding? Yes. Um, for me to grow the business because they see that, hey, right now, your team, one month, one building, how? Mm. Okay, I'll give you more money so uh, we can expand, you know, um, refine your system, refine your device so you can work with partners every month, you can do more business. Yeah, I think that's, that's very important thing. So what you bring up this is like, um, firstly, uh, when we, uh, we, we, we set up business, right, the first thing we look at uh, 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 a launch market, like a like, oh, like surveillance market in, the, in your case, and then you get your product out, right? We have this concept called product market fit, mm. right? So this product really fit this market. Uh, but then once we have that, then we need to grow, right? Mm. We need to replicate. Mm. And this is where the growth funding come, right? Mm. First is the seed funding and then the growth funding. So you have, you have more or less at that stage, right? That you can now on the growth, right? Expansion, you already tested your customer pilots and, uh, and all the features are all there. So mm. it's not a matter of growth mm. right so good i think uh, we come to a stage that uh, i will you know I, I i know you for a couple of years right so see you struggle through but uh, great to see you now on the growth stage and i think at this point in time it will be uh, uh it's probably the most appropriate time for us to end this session right for you to congratulate you on the on the path to high growth 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. Club. Right. Okay. So uh, for the audience at home, next week we will be uh, having uh, Tai Ling with us, and uh, Tai Ling is is also the co-founder and uh, CEO of Hikura. Hikura is in medical devices. Uh, it deals with uh, well called pregnancy and delivery of babies, and you no, know, is the pain because of the pain. Some some uh, uh, some some what you call the the. The mother to be uh, wants to uh, solve uh, solve the pain problem through what we call epidural, and and uh, that is a very difficult procedure, and uh, she has certain way of solving it. So we will get to see uh, Tai Ling with us next week. See you then. Bye.